Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pompoween. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Pompberry, and I'm not always in the woods. But today, I'm gonna be doing one of the ghosts from Crimson Peak. Now, this has been requested time and time again. Not necessarily this character, but I've gotten a ton of requests for Crimson Peak, and just things based off of movies from Guillermo del Toro in general. So today, I'm making that happen. I'm super excited. And today, I'm actually going to be taking inspiration from a painting that was done for a Guillermo del Toro tribute show at the Copro Gallery. And this is the painting, it was done by Brahm, and I was actually lucky enough to see this painting in person, and oh my god. It was one of those times that I was sad that I was poor. <laughs> because I wanted to have been able to buy that painting so bad. I swear to god, like if one day I won the lotto, I would probably just spend all my money on like art. I don't know, that, that's just me. But the reason this painting is so much more amazing in real life is because he added to the frame as well. So it was like the painting was coming out of the frame. It was like leaking out of the frame. There was just like red ooze coming out of it. And it was so stunning. And it's also huge, like it's super, super long. It was basically life-size, like you saw the ghost basically life-size. So anyway, lotto winning plans aside, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And I've already got my eyebrows covered up. If you wanna learn how to do that, I have a whole tutorial that you can watch by clicking right up here, just dedicated to brow cover-ups. The only difference today is that I sealed it with Prozade. Prozade is just a prosthetic adhesive and then I powdered it. So I think that's it. I'm very stoked about my new background. I thought it was very creepy and really contributed to the scary mood. So I think that's it. Let's jump straight into it. But before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support means the world to me. I swear to God. <laughs> so I really appreciate the little thumbs up and let's get to it. So I feel like every year I say that I'm not going to turn myself red ever again and then I do it the next year. I don't know why. I think I probably hate myself. I don't know. But turning yourself red is kind of complicated, um, at least with water activated paints, because there's a translucency to the paint that other face paints don't have, and so it makes it really weird. So the second time I had to turn myself red, I did it by airbrushing, and I would have done that this time, but my airbrush compressor is broken. So today I'm going to try a different method, which is using a grease paint. And I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Flash Palette to turn myself red, which isn't necessarily my first choice. I would much prefer to go in with a face paint base, but as I said, it gets patchy, it gets weird, I don't like red face paint, so I'm just not gonna use it. But before I get to applying the red, I'm gonna go in with some Skin Saver Barrier Lotion just to protect my skin from the grease paint. My skin likes to react to makeup. I break out very easily, and so hopefully this creates a nice little barrier that will protect my skin. Now, I usually use this barrier cream under prosthetics to make the removal easier. I don't know if it really protects against grease paint, but I figured I would try it anyway, because why not? It just sinks into the skin like lotion. And I'm just gonna take some of that red from the flash palette and take it on my beauty blender and start applying it to my face. In the painting, it's more of an orange red than a pure red, but the ghosts in the movie, they're more like a blue red like this. So I haven't really decided if I'm going to do a mix of the two or just stick to the painting as my reference, but I do need to lay down a red base first either way. Now I've switched over to a little flat brush so that I can just be more precise with the application in certain areas. And I find that the application is actually going better with a flat brush. I'm getting a more opaque and even coverage. And I've got my wig cap on already. And this is actually a look where I want to use my five head to my advantage. No, I do not have a forehead. I have a five head. And I want as much skin here as possible. So I'm just like really pulling my hair back and just trying to showcase the fact that, you know, there's a lot of real estate there. So if you don't have a huge forehead like me, a good idea for this look would probably be doing a bald cap and then you can put your wig like halfway on your head. That's what I should do, honestly. I'm just lazy about it. And so I'm just taking advantage of the fact that I have a ton of space here anyway. But the ghosts really, like their hair starts at the middle of their head because you can see like their skull right up here. Their head got bashed in. So, you know, it's a whole thing. I actually 
haven't watched Crimson Peak in a long time. I was gonna watch it yesterday, but then ran out of time, had a bunch of stuff to do, but I haven't seen it in so long. I definitely love Guillermo del Toro movies though. Like Pan's Labyrinth is literally the reason I became a makeup artist, but I do need to rewatch Crimson Peak again. Okay, I do need to paint my ears and my neck and I don't wanna do that with cream paint because getting cream paint out of your ears is the worst. And so for that, I will use the red paint listen, it's not my first choice. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna experiment a little bit. And instead of using the wool face paint that I normally would use, I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Color Airbrush. But instead of using it in my airbrush, I'm gonna try to brush it on and see how that works. I've done this with other airbrush paints before, but I don't think I've ever tried this one. I think it kind of works like the wolf color. It's kind of translucent, not great. I don't know why red paints are like this. Obviously it has something to do with the pigment. Okay, I'll finish my neck with this, but I think I'm still gonna go in with the wolf paint because that one comes out with water and I don't wanna try to remove this stuff out of my ears. So this paint works great when you airbrush it though. I did it last year for Halloween. I think it was for him that I did it on. Must have been, I think that was the only red look that I did. And it works beautifully in the airbrush. But when you brush it on, it's a little translucent. And that's fine, cause I'm gonna be like shading and highlighting and stuff. So I just really need just like a red base here. This paint is actually a hybrid, so it doesn't smudge that easily. So I'm going to use it around my collar. Just wait for it to dry before I can put my clothes back to their original position. And now for my ears, I'm going in with my wool face paint. Just taking the red. Again, I could have used one product for everything, but I didn't want to get grease paint out of my ears. Like that's a whole hassle that I just don't want to deal with. And I could have used this on my neck too, but I wanted to experiment. I look just lovely, I know. Now it's time to powder the face and I'm gonna do that with some translucent powder. And this is a little contraption that is meant for fake hair. Everyone asked me about this. You put like those little fake hairs in here for filling in bald spots. But instead I put translucent powder in here and this is a very old like special effects makeup artist trick. You use this a lot for powdering prosthetics and stuff that you don't want to move. So once that has a decent coating of powder, I'm going to go in with my puff and make sure it's complete. And the main reason I did the spray on layer first is just I didn't want to get my puff dirty with red. And so having a layer of powder on there kind of protects the puff a little bit. I'm just going to dust off the excess. Okay, so I just realized I'm gonna be highlighting and contouring in cream as well. So I don't know why I just powdered. But listen, it's fine, it's fine. I just, I don't know what's gotten into me today. But anyway, I'm actually going in with the Makeup Forever Color Stick in the yellow to start highlighting. And I'm gonna take that on the little brush that I was using before. I really don't know why I just powdered everything. I swear to God. I started today kind of late. I don't know what's going on, but. Listen, we'll make it work. So I'm using yellow because if you use white to highlight on red, it's gonna turn pink and I don't want pink. I want it to tend more orange red than anything. So I'm going to start with the yellow. I'll probably go in with white as well, but I'm starting with the yellow to highlight. And this is basically just a really fancy school makeup. And why am I looking so bright? Okay, there we go. That's more of the truth. But this one's really interesting because she's got a lot of like broken bones on her face. So I'm gonna be trying to emulate those as well. I'm going to try to pretend that I don't have any lips, which is gonna be interesting. And as you can see, the highlighting is working even though I powdered. It would be easier if I hadn't powdered it, but it's still, it's still working fine. So basically for the final image and the final result, I'm gonna be like, screaming and I'm going to flip my lips inwards to try to pretend that I have no lips. And so I'm just going to be highlighting kind of around them. And uh, that's the whole thing I'm gonna have to figure out. But that's something to keep in mind while you're doing something, especially if it's for a photo. You have to think how the model or yourself, how you're going to be posed and positioned for that photo. And depending on what the look is, you'll have to do the makeup accordingly. So I'm kind of not worrying about my lips too much because I know that they're gonna be 
turned in. So anyway, just a random thought that I thought I'd share. I really want to accentuate the jawbone, but I also want to make my face look slimmer. So I'm probably going to be heavily contouring this with black to make it seem like none of this flesh is here. I really just want to make myself look skeletal, really. I guess I am just going to follow the Brom painting. It's so beautiful and so well done. I don't see why not. And there's some little details here and there, like this little line going up and this little line over here. So I'm just closely following the reference image. But overall, it's basically a skull makeup. There's just little tiny details that set it apart. Now, once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take the white Makeup Forever color stick and I'm going to further accentuate certain areas. And as this mixes in with the other colors, it kind of creates a peach, but that's fine. I prefer that over just going pink if I were to do the white directly on top of the red. And this is just my base. I'm going to further highlight and intensify everything with eyeshadow afterwards. Right now it's looking very very colorful. This is supposed to be way more muted and I'm sure it will be once I get to the shading and everything, but right now it's looking very very funky. Very colorful. And I highlighted my lips right here because it's the only part that shows when I do this. So I do want to highlight the very outer part of my bottom lip. Okay, for my neck, since she's wearing a collar, I'm not going to try to replicate the neck. I'm just doing some like textured bony type of stuff on the neck. I'm probably going to hide it with the hair. I don't really want to give emphasis to the neck area, but I do have to do something there so that, you know, it's not just nothing. And the thing with grease paints and cream colors is that they have a saturation point. So you can only layer them so much. And so I feel like I've gotten to the saturation point. I feel like I've gotten where I want it to be. So now I'm going to move over to the shading. And I think I'm actually going to start the shading with some brown and then move to black just to give the shadows a little more depth. If you really want to give red some depth, I would recommend shading with blue, but because I want to follow a certain color palette here, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use brown instead. And again, I'm using the Makeup Forever color sticks. So I'm just gonna take the brown and start shading in certain areas, basically going in wherever I didn't highlight. And then I'm going to do the more intense shading with the black. I'm gonna use this to also give form to certain parts of the face, like here on the chin. I can make it protrude a little bit more by just shading around it. The lip as well definitely needs to be shaded so that it looks like there's a tiny little baby lip protruding. And here on this side, I'm going to try to cheat a little bit. I'm going to try to make my face seem crooked. So I'm going to be shading this jaw much further in than this side. I really want to make the face look crooked and jagged. The whole point of these ghosts is that they're all kind of crooked and it looks like someone pulled their faces. And even if you haven't watched the movie, I highly suggest just looking up like Crimson Peak ghost makeup because that's one thing that I love about the Guillermo del Toro movies is that they're always pretty thorough about taking behind the scenes footage and pictures and everything. So they have a ton of pictures from the makeup room when they're doing the ghosts and you can see them up close and everything and they just look so weird and distorted. And if you've never seen the behind the scenes for Pan's Labyrinth, stop everything and go look at those photos. They are honestly so awesome. And like, again, the reason I decided to become a makeup artist, you can just see them animating the Fawn's face and everything. And you can see the stages of the makeup. It was a combination of makeup and animatronics. It was such an awesome movie and production and everything. God, that would have been like a dream project to be on. Still is my dream project is to do something like that. That's very like fantasy heavy with lots of like creatures and stuff. But one day, one day. And instead of just filling all this in with black, I want to give it dimension. I want it to look like it's hollow. And so I'm going to start with brown on this side and there's going to be a darker point on this side, but I'm gonna try to give this dimension in a way where it looks hollowed out. So I'm gonna be starting with the brown. I might mix some red in here later and then I'll go in with a black. Same thing for the eye sockets. I'm not just going to paint them black and call it a day. I want to give this dimension. I want it to seem like you're looking 
into the skull and I'm gonna try to make that happen. I'm just going and adding all the little shading details here and there. The thing with looks like this is that it's all about the texture. So the more texture you can add, the cooler and grosser and creepier it's gonna look. So you just want to add as much little bits of texture and detail where you can. I'm also doing some quick kind of texture and shading on the neck area. The way I'm creating texture is just by kind of like tapping the brush patting it. And now last but not least I'm going in with the black color stick and that I can start using to fill in this part of the skull but I'm still gonna go in with some red because this is all kind of textured. It's not just pure black either but it will hopefully give it a little more dimension. I also want to darken up here, patting that to blend it with the brown because padding gives me texture. I'm not dragging the brush at any point. Also darkening areas of the eye sockets and I'm gonna darken this side of the nose. I'm just kind of outlining this other side again because of depth. We don't want it to be fully black on this side. And then I can start shading the sides of my face. I really want to make them kind of disappear so I can fill that. I can probably just go in with the color stick and just fill that in with black and then blend it out. And here is where I'm going to be able to make the face seem jagged. But if it disappears into pure black, it's not going to really blend into the background. I'm going to have a red wig. So I think I might actually, now that I'm looking at it, I might clean some of this off and just make it a really, really dark red. So if I were to take a little cotton pad and just take some of that excess off, then I'm going to go back in with red so that it can just fade into like a really, really dark red. And that's what I'm going to do for the sides of my neck too. I'm just going to use the excess that's on the brush to darken it, but not go full black. Yeah, see, this is kind of the color that I want for the sides of my face. Well, sometimes you gotta mess up to figure out what works. The ears, ideally, I would shade them as well, but because they're not really gonna appear, the hair's gonna be over them, I think I'm gonna leave them, it's fine. I just painted them red in case they appear, at least they'll be the same color as the hair. Okay, so I'm just painting some red back over this black, and that still fades pretty dark, but at least it will kind of blend into the hair a little bit better rather than a stark black. It would make sense if I either had a black wig on or there was like a black background or something, but because the face is actually going to be fading into the hair, it makes more sense that I try to make it more the color of the hair. And now before I powder everything once and for all, I'm just taking some of the red and just applying that to this hollowed out part to kind of blend the black and the brown together. Then I'm also going to do that on my eyes. I haven't done anything to my eyes yet and I'm just going to fill it in. There we go. Now I feel like we can go in and powder everything. And again, same thing, just some translucent powder. And then I'm just taking a brush just making sure everything is very, very well powdered. And now that I feel like my face is a desert, there's so much powder on here, I can go and lightly brush off the excess. I don't want to move the cream paints around. Now it's time to do this all over again, but with eyeshadow to do even smaller details and further intensify everything. This was just the base, y'all. I think I'm going to start with a shading rather than with a highlighting, and I don't typically do that, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going in with my Black Moon Cosmetics Orb of Light palette. This is literally one of my all-time favorite palettes. It is all mattes. It is a beauty. And I'm going in with this dark red color here, and I'm going to start just intensifying all the little... Little, ooh, that's a lot. Hold on. I always forget how pigmented this is. Okay, I'm taking the excess off of the brush and I'm going to do like all the little details that are like the little... Oh god, that is way too dark. Okay, hold on. I might have to shade with the orange? Let's see how that works out. 
Ooh, that's also really dark, but that might be the winner for now. Yeah, this is like way too dark, but I'll, I'll fix that at some point. So I'm going with the orange and I'm just doing any sort of little shading detail. There's a lot of like little intricacies here, I guess, because it's like a skull that still has like a little bit of skin on it. So it's like really stretched skin, but really leathery skin as well. And so I'm just trying to make it look like it's been really pulled and it's just just gross. Ah, I took some of the red and that is too much. So there's no real rhyme or reason here. I'm really just following the reference. Basically just adding texture where I can to this to make it look gross and creepy. Basically anywhere where I shaded before, I'm just intensifying and adding like even smaller, like little shadows. Again, just padding so that it creates some more texture. If you want, turn this into a drinking game and just drink every time I say texture. That will probably be very intense. I'm gonna take some of the red to do some of the deeper shadows. See, it looks like I'm using black. It is insanity, but I'm just gonna keep intensifying everything. I'm also going to kind of create an edge around here. Using this little brush is especially good for getting the areas like around the nose, stuff that you need to be like more precise with. And so I just like doing this kind of detail work better with eyeshadow and a little brush rather than with a cream color. You just have more precision with powder than with cream anyway. So now I'm just really trying to make my own bone structure kind of disappear. I want the nose to seem kind of crooked. Everything about her is a little bit crooked. Well, in the original, it's very crooked. And then now I think I'm gonna go in with the black and I'm gonna take it on a really teeny tiny pencil brush. And I'm gonna start really darkening the areas that need to be really black and you can see just how black this eyeshadow is kind of crazy but I can go and I can really define those areas by using this little teeny tiny brush I haven't even highlighted yet but you can see how much more dimension this already has just by shading it's gonna get even more intense once I highlight with the eyeshadow some areas I want to really define the shapes I want to make them pretty sharp like the edges where the bone has just broken off I really want to make sure that those edges are very very sharp and defined. Like here it's still a little a little muddy. The edges are a little bit blurred so I definitely want to go in and just really define that. Also going to take this brush and just dot the black around to get some texture. Just going to keep going around those edges. So it's shaping up pretty well. I think I'm going to take the black on a slightly bigger pencil brush and just start heavily shading this side. Again, just patting the color. I might take some of the dark brown too, just so it's not so harsh, like pure black. But I do want to darken this side and darken the little spots here too. It's pretty hard trying to make this seem hollow. I feel like it's getting there. So darkening around the eyes. I'm probably going to be putting on my black sclera contacts, which I haven't put on in so long. I don't even know if I remember how to do that still. So I'm a little scared of ruining my makeup, but I'm sure it'll work out. Now for highlighting, I'm gonna start with a white and this is Sugar Pills Taco. It's just a matte white and so it'll make things a little bit ashy, like it'll definitely mute them down, but I'm afraid that if I go straight in with the yellow and this is Sugar Pills Buttercup, Butter Cupcake, Butter Cupcake, it might make it too colorful. So I'm actually gonna mix the two together to get sort of a muted yellow. Cause if I do the yellow just on its own, I think it's going to be too intense. And I'm going to try to really highlight all the high spots of the bones to really make them stand out. There's just certain little areas that need a little bit of a pop. And I'm just gonna keep hitting all the little parts that need a little, little pop. I'm gonna use a little bit of that to highlight in here, just very, very lightly. And then I think I'm also gonna go with the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette, and I'm gonna go in with Game Over. This is kind of a mid-tone, so that I can shade certain areas and knock back the yellow a little bit over certain shadows 
to adjust the color and do some more subtle shading. And I think I want to add some even more texture and just do like little dots everywhere. I feel like there's not enough. If you thought it was over, I regret to inform you, it is not over. Now I'm going in with some face paint and I'm gonna do that to highlight and to contour a little bit. And I'm gonna go in with the Mehron Paradise paint in the color Mango. And this is a yellow, but it's not super vibrant. So I think it'll be perfect for doing some more specific highlighting. And I just wanna be able to define certain edges a little bit more. I want them to be very crisp. But again, I don't necessarily want it to be yellow, so I might mix in some red later, but I just really want to define certain edges. And especially like here on the jaw, I want to really define this edge here. And I think I'm also going to take some of the Wolf Orange to do some of these highlights because I don't, as I said, I don't want it to be like super yellow. But I do want to define these edges. Yeah, so the orange makes it a little closer to red, but still helps. Okay, so I'm mixing the red into the yellow and it gives kind of a more peachy color. And I think that's a good highlight without it leaning too yellow or too orange. I also mix some white in there as well. And it's basically just like a peachy tone. And this I think will give me a nice highlight. Try to knock back the yellow a bit. And with this I can hopefully do some more detailed highlighting. I'm also going back in and fixing certain areas that like may have gone a little too dark. And the reason I use so many different types of products like cream and then shadow and then face paint is because you get different textures with each type of product. So I just like getting the most out of each type that I can. Like I would never be able to make these sharp lines with the shadow or the cream. So I save it for last so that I can go in and define everything like so. You can see it makes a pretty big difference. Then I'm going in with some red face paint and I'm just going to do some further detail work. I'm trying to bring back some more red into this. Doing some shading. So I feel like the red can get a little lost with all the highlighting and stuff. So this is just a long process of layering colors and products. You guys know the drill. You've been here before. If you haven't, well, I hope you enjoy the process because I do this a lot when it comes to looks like these. Just a lot of layering. Now I'm gonna do brown with a face paint and then black. So it's basically the same process three times. It's very tedious work, <laughs> but I enjoy it quite a bit. You can see this will just help to define and I can be more precise. And I keep doing this to check it out and see how it's looking. I think it's, it's matching up pretty well. Now it's time for the black face paint. Now I can make the super, super crisp and defined lines. And now it will really darken up this black area here in the skull. So I'm just kind of blending it inwards. There you go, even more depth to this area. Imagine if I had to like open the door for someone right now. Well, one time there was an earthquake while I was doing one of my Halloween looks last year and I thought that I might have to evacuate in like full Halloween makeup. And I was like, oh, how do I explain this to my neighbors? I'm also just very lightly outlining with the black at the jawline and then just kind of blending it out just to get a really sharp and defined outline and I'm going to do the same with the cheekbone. Now I'm going to try something that I think might work and I swear it'll be the last step kind of almost. I'm going in with the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the color Acid Trip and it is a neon orange. It's a UV reactive orange but I'm going to use it to highlight certain areas and I think it just might work. I think I think it's the highlight I've been looking for and trying to achieve and just couldn't figure out how to do it. And even though it's a neon orange, it's going to be acting as my highlight just in certain areas because it's still warm enough that it reads red, but it's still bright enough that it's a highlight. Let me zoom you in so you can see a little bit better maybe. I think that's actually a pretty damn good highlight. Should have just maybe just used this from the get-go. I thought it would look too weird, so I figured I'd save it for the end and just test it out just in case. 
you know, you never know. Then I especially want to use this around the mouth. In this area here is where I really want to highlight. I wasn't getting a proper highlight with anything that I was trying. Yeah, there we go. I feel like that reads pretty well. I'm just going to hit all the high spots of the face just to get a little bit of that brightness. Sometimes all you need is a little neon. Who knew? Okay, now for the lips. I'm going in with a black lipstick. This is Sleepwalker by Black Moon Cosmetics, and I'm going to do it on the inner part of my lips, just wherever I didn't highlight, and you'll only be able to see a very, very small amount of it. I'm also going to try to shape it kind of pointy to match hers. This is probably the weirdest lipstick application I've ever done. Now I'm just going to do some black tight lining with the Milk Boss Gel Liner. Now we're almost done. I'm just going to take care of my teeth now. Yes, there is lipstick on them, but yes, I will be painting them. And I'm going to be using the Chrome Tooth Polish. And this one, what's the name of this one? Let's see. Let's open it up. And this is the red one. It comes with full instructions on how to paint your teeth. And so I'm going to be doing just how they say, but it's basically a tooth enamel. It says to shake it up and then they provide you with little cotton rolls and I'm going to use that to keep my mouth open. I'm going to place these underneath my lips and this is to stop your lips from touching your teeth and oh my god I can't talk with these. Now I have to dry my teeth using some more cotton and now I can paint it like so. Now another layer. I gotta let it dry. I look so weird. Then I can take these out. Okay, so it's my first time using the red chrome tooth polish, and it's actually not like a tooth enamel at all. It has, as you saw, a very translucent finish, almost like a jelly-like finish, but usually tooth enamel goes on like a nail polish, and it's super opaque, and you do it in one go, and then that's it, and it like chips off because it's kind of like really hard. This one's more like a jelly finish. Like, you can touch it. It's like a jelly, but I think it will harden in a little bit. So I'm just gonna wait for that to harden and then there's gonna be another step for the mouth because I can't reach all my teeth all the way back there. And I also wanna color my gums. And yes, you can color your gums and your tongue. Okay, I feel like this has stiffened up pretty well. That's what she said. Now I'm gonna move on to where did it go? Oh man, what? Oh, it's right here behind my microphone. <laughs> now I'm going to move on to mouth effects and this is in the color blood red. So I've used this before on the channel, but basically it is a temporary oral coloring as the label says, and it's got a sweet vanilla mint flavor. You got to shake it up and then all you need is like a drop or two. And this stuff is really awesome. They have a bunch of different colors. They have brown, green, even blue, yellow, a bunch of different stuff, but here you go. And then just swish it around. <laughs> and there you go. My gums are colored. I'm probably gonna add more in a little bit, but my tongue is colored. Probably gonna add more here to my gums directly and let that do its thing. It looks super gross and it coats all my other teeth so that they look gross too. And there we go. These teeth are obviously a much brighter red because they have that red base, but the other teeth are coated in red and they look kind of gross. I actually think I prefer the way that these teeth look stained. These just look like bright freaking red. Uh, I'm thinking, should I kind of chip away at this a little to, oh, it comes right off. <laughs> oh no, I probably shouldn't have done that, but see how? It stains the tooth red in a really gross way. I kind of like that. You know what? I'm going to do a few teeth with the chrome red and a few without because then it kind of looks like some are protruding more than others. I'm trying to chip off some of it so that it doesn't come off entirely and that way it just gives like a weird effect to the teeth. I think I'm going to reapply some of the tooth polish but kind of in a chipped way. Because now it just looks like the teeth are messed up. I like it. Okay, now I can add some more mouth effects. It'll make my teeth look way more messed up. Because now the chrome tooth polish is just all kind of cracked and weird. Oh yeah, I like that way better. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my wig. Going to get the scleras in. Try to get them in. And then I'll come back to show you the finished look. And this is the finished look.
So I ended up doing these two black dots on my lids to emulate the painting and I think the look works either way. I was able to get my scleras in which always makes any look a million times spookier but I do quite like the effect of the eyes closed as well and the wig is just I'm trying to make it as scraggly as possible. I've just been like back combing it with my hands pretty much to just make it look really messed up and scraggly. But yeah, I am really happy I did this. I wish that I had the whole dress and the whole thing. Like the outfits in this movie are so amazing, especially for the ghosts. They're like super distressed Victorian outfits that are so gorgeous. And I wish I had all that, but I just have a really simple red dress. But we make do with what we have. <laughs> this just makes me wanna go hot places and like I wish I was going somewhere like this you know I wish I could go scare a few people there's some kids down the hall I could knock on their door that would be a fun time <laughs> but yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video I feel like it's just a really cool weird skull makeup it's a variation of a skull makeup it's like a broken up skull which we don't see that often and thank you so so much for watching thank you so much to all my patrons who support me and I'll see you next time bye